Well, you know what they say, ninth time's the charm. After building eight robots, none of which really survived for long, several of which never even competed, we finally did it. We finally produced a bot that didn't have an obvious flaw from the get-go. This is Mary, our third Traybot of the season. I'm Caden from Kepler Electronics, and let's get started. This design was intended to be a sort of spiritual successor to Pippin, the six part that was designed to be small and bulletproof. Naturally, the tray stacker version would be named Mary. This bot is built on a new style of drivetrain for us. Instead of using our normal drivetrain of four motor chain drive, we decided to go with a new style after having several matches where we threw drive chains. This is a directly geared drivetrain. The drivetrain is composed of two 200 RPM motors geared five to three, connected in the middle to transfer the torque to both wheels. The drivetrain is 25 holes wide, which is the same width as Pippin. We decided to build the drivetrain out of steel to try and lower our center of mass as much as possible. This is about as thin as you can possibly build a four motor drivetrain aside from building some right angle gearboxes or stacking the motors vertically. Not that you'd want to go much thinner than this, mind you. Attached to the drivetrain is the tower setup. This holds the tilter mechanism along with the arms. Everything up here is designed to be immovable and compact. The arms were built first, so that's what we'll go over first. The arms are powered by a single 100 RPM motor in the center, which is geared up to these high strength axles using a 1 to 1 ratio. This both cuts down on extra width, along with helping us get away without needing to use a high strength shaft coupler. The whole thing is geared 5 to 1, helping add more torque for the arms. We didn't support the gears on the outside because we used high strength axles, and this hasn't proven to be a huge problem. The next major part of the puzzle was the tray itself. We wanted to go with a thin tray that fit between the roller fins to prevent conflicts with the rollers. This tray increases in width after a point, providing a good amount of surface for the cubes to ride on. While not ideal, the button screws on the tray are absolutely necessary. When we first built this bot, we had issues with the tray bending, so the screws are there to keep the cross beams attached in multiple places to combat this. The sides are cut down aluminum plates, which give a small amount of support to the cubes when stacking, but are mostly there to attach the second stage of the tray. As the sides are pretty short, the cubes are really held in by these walls mounted to the roller arms. They're maybe slightly too wide, but this didn't seem to be a huge deal. The second stage of the tray was taken directly off the previous tray. It uses the common method of L-beams on the sides along with plexiglass. In our design, the plexi is held off the base by spacers. This is because the joint we used to attach the two would cause there to be a significant gap in space between them. The joint we use is a modified gusset joint, meaning that the lower tray has 45 degree gussets attached to it which are attached to the L-channel on the top tray, forming the pivot. This helps keep the pivot point above the actual surface that the cubes are resting on, allowing for easier deployment. The top of the tray is a simple linear slide setup using the simple standoff and high strength bearing method. The idea is for this to be pushed out by a cube, increasing our capacity by one. The top needs a rubber band deployment as it will pull the top cube when stacking and cause the entire stack to fall down if it is allowed to rest on the top cube. But as we need it to stay within the size limits, we have this small rubber band pulling the standoffs together, which provides just enough resistance to allow the intakes to push a cube into the slides and push the slides up. The tray itself is tilted by a relatively common 4-bar mechanism, but simply beefed up a lot. It's a 100 RPM motor geared 1 to 5, we decided to go with double gears along with double C-channel to support the second part of the 4-bar more. Because when we used low strength shafts, the gears decided to skip due to the long, unsupported section of axle. The whole 4-bar folds underneath itself, which is inverse of what most people do, but in this design it was necessary because of the tight clearances. A tray is useless without rollers, so here's ours. They're relatively traditional rollers, having the classic fin and tread design, but the rollers themselves are mounted to hinges. This helps the rollers better accept cubes that are not perfectly aligned. The tread pattern is a relatively standard setup of long fins and traction treads, but we, for whatever reason, keep ripping the traction treads out of the fins and I really have no clue why. But the compression is good with the three rubber bands helping to provide enough tension on the rollers to allow them to put cubes in towers, but also open up to accept cubes. The rollers are kept in place when down using these beams with gussets on the top. The beams help keep the arms in line, and the gussets help align the arms should they be slightly out of line. One problem that we had was that these didn't work quite as well as we hoped. Turns out, they were actually being pushed out, so throwing a couple standoffs in between them helped fix everything. It did take some time to find a place that didn't conflict with the tray linkage, but we ended up finding these two locations in the end. The arms themselves are used to deploy the tray, which does not fully flip down, but instead rests at something like a 15 degree angle. 
At the beginning of Autonomous, the arms raise up, pushing the tray far enough that the rubber bands take over and snap it back into place. We can also intake a cube to do the same thing, it just kind of depends on which Autonomous program we're running. As almost all tray bots do, we have problems with tipping backwards. This was remedied by a simple linear slide that deploys during Autonomous. We use an interior slide mounted to the robot to prevent any leverage from breaking the slide free from the rail. And this is pulled out by a set of two rubber bands. To keep the slide inside the bot and within size restrictions, we use a piece of VEX string tucked between the lift gears. This can get stuck if improperly set up, but this is still a pretty decent way to keep an anti-tip within the bot. And that's the bot. It's pretty much the most clean bot design ways that I think I've ever worked on, but that was the idea. As little jank and as much support as possible. Now, nothing's ever going to be perfectly jank free, but this is pretty close. It's pretty late in the game, but I think we're going to be keeping this bot around. It's a fun bot and definitely has good bones, unlike the last 8 bots this season. Once we get the last few kinks ironed out, along with some more drive practice, this bot should be a pretty good contender. I hope you enjoyed and learned from this robot, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe so you can see more. Aside from competing in Vex, I also compete in combat robotics, so if you want to see my 1 pound combat robot blast wave, be sure to subscribe and check that video out in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and keep designing!